Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to the Saturday session of the Restoring Ecosystems to Reverse Global Warming Conference at Tufts University. Um, yeah. Um, um, how many people were here last night? Was that a rockin' time or what? Huh? So this is, this is the shot heard around the world, or this is uh, the narrative heard around the world. Um, so just for opening remarks, I'd like to um, uh, make some uh, appropriate shout outs. I'd like to thank the core team of Biodiversity for a Livable Climate. And uh, if you're in the room, please stand. Uh, these people are Adam Sachs, uh, Jim Worry, Brian Cartwright and Sue Hardin, um, Gabrielle Bastine, uh, Carl Tiedemann, uh, Helen Silver, uh, just volunteers doing a, a great job. My apologies if I forgot someone, um, uh, if I forgot myself. Also the volunteers, the Tufts volunteers who just came out of the woodwork and helped uh, any of you here, please stand up and also get uh, proper. Um, and then also really want to thank the uh, sponsors and the partners and um, <laughs> the topsy-turvy program here. Uh, it's impossible to figure it out, but somewhere in the program, where are they? All right, well. Where is it? Okay, okay, right. So if you go to the back upside down program and then open it, there's our sponsors and partners. And uh, really, we couldn't have done this without them. And uh, so please take a moment and see who our sponsors and partners are. It's really very helpful. And there are Epic cards and Equal Exchange chocolate bars. So, so the e Epic and Equal Exchange are also sponsors, and, and they've provided uh, bars for refreshment out there. So thank you to all the sponsors and partners. And um, so what I'm gonna do right now is very briefly finish the presentation I started last night, but, <laughs> but wasn't able to get to. Now, um, uh, I, I'm guessing that most of the people here, okay, most, of the, most, most, most people here right now were here last night. So we're just gonna go through this real quick. It was, this was just examples of restoration that I talked about and some basic concepts like holism and, um, and using uh, livestock as a proxy for wild herds to res restore degraded ecosystems and, um, and, and examples of ecosystems that are restored by uh, doing proper livestock management, uh, in many cases increasing the number but changing their motion so that they're a facsimile for a wild rumen and herds. And here were just some examples of restoration. And uh, you saw these pictures yesterday, so I'm just gonna go through them quickly. Uh, really fairly extraordinary, including uh, the emergence of perennial, of, uh, of large deep-rooted perennial plants and the biodiversity in the soil that you see with the, uh, with the uh, centipedes and the fungus and of course the dark Soil, and why is soil dark? Carbon. carbon. And where'd that carbon come from? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, all right. Um, so, okay, um, just many pictures of restoration. You've seen these. Um, <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to show this slide last night. This to me actually is my favorite, is my favorite set. Um, so this is from the Hogsback region of the Karoo in South Africa. This land was totally killed from decades of wheat. Um, uh, and you can see in the terrain, you know, you can see where the, where the wheat cropping was done. It's being restored. And how's it being restored? With grazing. So there you go. That's land truthing on land that's now under holistic management. The wheat is gone. The livestock are back. So is the grass. So is the healthy soil. So this to me is really a sign of hope, moving from grain cropping back to native prairie. I wanna just applaud the people that are doing that. <laughs> um, and uh, so then just quickly, how much carbon is captured in this restoration? 
um, and grasslands are the largest ecosystem. And there'll be other speakers who can, can um, talk more specifically about this, but my rough calculation is 88 to 210 gigatons or the equivalent of 40 to 100 parts per million CO2 by restoring grasslands. And then the part that I didn't get to talk about yesterday is, is how this impacts how we think about the future. And um, uh, obviously, the, the way we, the, it's presented to us is very negative. And so here's the actual cover of the British journal New Scientist magazine from 1999, uh, preparing you for the next millennium. And, and the headline is Population Crashes, Mass Migration, Vast New Deserts, Cities Abandoned, How to Survive This Century. That's really something to look forward to, isn't it? You really want to get up in the morning and go, oh, wow, population crash. Um, so this is it. I mean, this is the cover. This is how they decided they should launch the next millennium. It's a very respectable journal. And uh, here, are, here are some um, pages from inside of it of what a, a four degree warmer world would look like. And um, you can't grow anything in the United States, but you can fill it with solar cells and you can grow stuff in Antarctica. And, um, but bioengineering will come to the rescue and we'll have space mirrors and artificial trees and reflective crops. Um, biochar, that's good. Um, ocean fertilization, putting you know, iron um, in the oceans to create algae blooms. And what a great idea, let's have algae blooms. Um, aerosols, cloud seeding, car carbonate addition, I mean this is, this is, the, this is their answer. So I was so upset, you may notice I am I'm an emotional guy, that I decided to redo it. <laughs> and then, uh, then you have your pick. <laughs> Which one do you want? All right, well thank you everyone very much. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, so now uh, today's morning session is going to be uh, Tom Garreau of the Coral Reef Alliance, uh, Greg Ritalik from the University of Oregon, and, uh, or Oregon, excuse me, and uh, Richard Teague from Texas A&M. Um, they're real scientists, I'm just an amateur. And um, uh, so let me do the introduction for uh, Tom first. Tom is a biogeochemist, a restorative ecologist, a climate scientist, and reef restoration expert. Tom Garreau is passionate about soils as the primary way of addressing global warming at this late date, given that reducing emissions alone cannot prevent dangerous climate change unless natural carbon sinks are significantly increased. He'll explain the basics of soil carbon and how healthy water cycles can cool the earth. Tom.